Hallelujah. Well, good afternoon and welcome to you wherever you are logging on to worship with us this Easter Sunday afternoon. Um, you'll see we've been practicing our social distancing, which means working out uh, how we fill the gaps between Dave at the organ and then leading our worship. And as much as we have a wonderful time of worship ahead of us, um, it is a shame that we don't get to kick off Sunday morning worship with an entire congregation singing Jesus Christ is risen today, which is why Dave has played that wonderful fanfare on the organ. If you want to sing that along to yourselves as we're worshipping or possibly this afternoon. But to lead us in a time of Easter praise, Dave. Many thanks to Richard. Uh, I want to add my welcome to this live stream service. I want to reassure everyone that live stream is being done in the safest way possible. I'm grateful to the government for permitting live streams in official guidance. I don't support calls to open churches this Easter. We're here so that you can stay at home. You'll find the service sheet and the children's activities on the church website. Look for the newsletter page, just follow the links. And you can also see the copyright information on today's service sheet. As a church community, it's important we worship God and pray together. Even on this strange Easter Sunday, we can still rejoice in the resurrection of our Lord. Now, 
it may not come as a surprise that sometimes when we're picking the songs for these unusual worship sessions, um, we do have to think a little bit about what will work in different circumstances. Wonderful band leading our worship here, wonderful voices out there in cyberspace. Uh, but today it is not like that. These are easily six songs we're singing today that, that are fun, are Easter, that sing of resurrection. But there is a, a sort of a theme to them beyond the resurrection, and it's something of a challenge. I want us to think of this time of prayer and praise as both the prayer and the praise. And as we sing these next three songs, they all sing to Jesus. They all sing of the resurrection. But I'd like us to sing with a particular group of people in mind each time, with an earthly direction. So we sing the next song. How great the chasm that lays between us. I'd like us to turn our thoughts to our leaders and to the experts who are doing everything they can to work us through difficult times. Because we are all limited and frail and inexperienced when it comes to the huge bigger picture. So it requires a reminder that Jesus' resurrection has set us free on a path to love one another, to help one another, and that is particularly important for our leaders, for our politicians, scientists, the economists, the medical professionals, professionals working to make light of a dark situation. They need Christ's freeing power. So as we sing this song, we think of our leaders, how great the chasm. How great the chasm that lay between us How high the mountain I could not climb In desperation I turned to heaven And spoke your name into the night then through the darkness, your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul. The work is finished, the end is written, Jesus Christ, my living Oh. 
began to breathe. Out of the silence, the roaring lion declared the rave had no claim on me. Then came the morning that sealed the strength, who need a reminder of their own innocence and frailty, and that we understand the frailty which they face, sometimes impossible decisions. Remind that you are an ever-living hope. Amen. Our next song, a Sunday club favourite for this season sings thank you to Jesus, thank you for the cross of Calvary, thank you for the rolled stone of resurrection. Um, and as we sing to Jesus, we sing with Jesus as we thank all those putting themselves on the front line, all those working sacrificially to help us, all those allowing us to be safe as we stay in isolation, and working to help us at an earthly level experience some of that freedom we just sang. Once again, we thank Jesus for giving that opportunity. But let's also keep in mind those around us we need to thank. Oh, no. 
This song of our hope, that we have a strong and certain hope, is to our third group. This is to ourselves, and to our friends and family, those known dearest to us, those who we want to remember at these times, and also remembering ourselves in times of anxiety, uncertainty, worry and loneliness, that ultimately we don't need to be afraid. Ultimately, we are not lonely, for Jesus is alive and he reigns in glory now. As we sing this song, don't be afraid to be a little bit boastful here, a little bit proud, a little bit arrogant. Think on yourselves, wherever you are, and be refreshed by the strong and certain hope that Jesus is alive. Fixed and unchanging 
majesty, enthroned above the galaxy, and still his glory bursts the sky, and all creation shines the cry. I know he lives. Jesus is alive, and he reigns in glory. friendship and fellowship of close company and we lift ourselves before you for we know whatever the uncertainties of the current time and the months ahead however much we don't know we do know that you live and while you live we can never be alone Our spirit can never be defeated. And we are always, always loved by your Son, whose resurrected name we praise today. Amen. The Bible says on the first day of the week the disciples went to the tomb and they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. Let's join together in our prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Easter confession reminds us that Jesus is the Passover lamb who has been sacrificed for us. He offers us forgiveness and a new beginning. So we pray together. Risen Lord Jesus, we say sorry for the times we have failed to follow your commands and not lived as your followers. Forgive us, we pray, and let us live in the power of your resurrection life, that we may show the world your love and your ways. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Pardon us and set us free from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And our special prayer for this Easter Sunday. Lord of all life and power, who through the mighty resurrection of your Son overcame the old order of sin and death, to make all things new in him, Grant that we, dying to sin and being raised to life in Jesus Christ, may reign with him in glory, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit we praise and honour, glory and might, now and forever. Amen. Mark and Sparklers and Kingdom Kids and J-Team and Teen Live and YPF. So hopefully 
um, we'll all be back together soon. But in the meantime, there is an activity sheet on the newsletter um, on the website, uh, the newsletter page, and you can download that sheet that's got um, a picture about the resurrection to colour and a, a little puzzle and a uh, word search because I know how much you enjoy doing word searches. So happy Easter, everyone. Okay, so I'm going to read now from Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 to 4. Since then you have been raised with Christ, set your hearts on things above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Our Gospel reading is from St John's Gospel, chapter 20, beginning at verse 1. Hear the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of lying linen, uh, of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that, they, that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from Scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realise it was Jesus. He asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord, and she told them that he had said these things to her. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We've come to realise lots of things uh, over the last few weeks, but one of the things we've come to realise in this lockdown time is that reality is important. 
Um, we've heard about virtual walks and virtual pubs and uh, we long for reality. Virtual walks, virtual pubs, virtual conversations aren't good enough. Now John's account of the resurrection emphasises that it's real. It's absolutely real. It's not symbolic. It's not imagination. It's not some sort of vague, heavenly vision. It's real. And I find this the most credible account to the resurrection in all sorts of ways. Because John doesn't try to explain anything about how it happened. He just gives us the, the bare facts. Uh, if you want one example, my favourite example of this, uh, Mary was the first person to see the empty tomb. And she went and told the disciples. Did they believe her? Of course they didn't. Uh, they thought, she's a woman, she's got it wrong, no sense of direction, she's, you know, emotional, or whatever. They had to see for themselves, didn't they? So true to life. Uh, and John emphasises, above all, this is a real event. Uh, not just an empty tomb, but a real, visible, touchable Jesus as well. And the reality is important. In this time when we do so much virtually, it's even more important. When Paul wrote to the Colossians, uh, he talks about reality. Since then you've been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. The reality of resurrection goes way beyond just the earthly empty tomb, the reality of no body. We're in a time when we're mourning almost 10,000 deaths in the UK alone because of these tragic circumstances. And they are tragic. I don't want to minimise 10,000 lost lives at all. But in the midst of all that, Jesus offers us the reality his promises. Colossians chapter 3 verse 3 says you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. That's a, a real comfort now, a real promise now. And he goes on to offer us even more reality in verse 4. When Christ who is our life appears then you also will appear with him in glory. The reality of comfort for all eternity. It's worth remembering that Paul probably wrote Colossians from lockdown. He was a prisoner. That's what we're told. It's one of Paul's letters from prison. So he understands just how difficult things are in this time when we're isolated, when reality is important. We live in a hard present. We live in an uncertain future. But the resurrection is real. And the reality of the empty tomb, the reality of Jesus, who was not just a vision, but really was raised from death, the reality of what this offers us gives us an unshakable faith. The real power of God, the real resurrection of Jesus, the real hope, the real comfort, the real strength. Now just as we're being asked to uh, live our lives virtually in so many ways at the moment, so Jesus says, don't be too wedded to the things of earth. Fix your minds on the things above. Not because he wants us to be less concerned about 10,000 deaths and the horrors that we see around us, but because he wants us to know that in the end, God has all things in his hand. And for me, the resurrection proves that Jesus really is who he says he is. And the resurrection proves that God's love is an eternal love, not just for now, 
that is very much from love, of course. But it's a love that gives us hope of God's plan, God's purpose, God's eternal love being worked out. Thank you for listening. We're going to pray. As we pray, let's start by remembering all those who are struggling and suffering. Father, remember those in hospital and those caring for them. We give thanks for the lives of those who have died. And we pray for the bereaved. We pray for Lord for those who are fearful at this time, for those who worry about their future and the future of their loved ones. We pray for those who are struggling with the effects of this lockdown, whether it's psychological effects or physical effects or spiritual effects. Lord, into all of that, pour your real love, your real strength, your real support, your real spirit, we pray. Father, as we remember specific people, we're asked to remember Amanda's brother who is in hospital. We pray for Asberth on a ventilator in New York and recovering from an operation. We pray for Brian, Sharon's cousin, a doctor in the US who's suffering from this virus. Pray for his recovery. We pray for Joyce Bell's niece in the US who's tested positive for the virus. We pray for Tolu who is still unwell. We pray for his healing. Lord, these are just a few. We bring before you all who are struggling and suffering and pray for your healing hand to touch them. Father, we pray for those who are working in so many ways around the world, not just the doctors and nurses and care workers, but those in Tear Fund who are working urgently to get poor people clean water for hand washing. Those in the leprosy mission working with some of the poorest and most vulnerable people in the world. Those close to the home in Anchor House and in the Newham Homeless Persons Outreach Teams who are working to support and help homeless people, those at St. Joseph's Hospice, working in very difficult conditions. Lord, we commit all of these to you. We pray that you'll support and strengthen them. And finally, Lord, very close to home, we give thanks for the life of Woody Mack. We pray for Denise and all the family as they mourn the loss of their dad. We pray for the plans for the funeral. We pray that as we say farewell to our friend and our brother, that we may know that your love, your real and eternal love, promises us hope and strength for the future. Father, we offer you all these prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. Before we move to Holy Communion, we're going to sing our, our next song. And uh, as we sing this, I'm going to let Richard introduce this. This is his. I'm actually going to duck in for a minute even before that. Um, and apologise to those of you who lost the feed uh, about 10 minutes ago. That was entirely at our end. I'm glad we were able to get it up so quickly. But Carol, could I get you to briefly say hello to the young people again, please? It was that 30 seconds that we lost, and I think it would be nice to be able to give a Christmas greeting. Uh, sorry, a Christmas well, we're getting ahead of ourselves. An Easter, an Easter greeting. <laughs> Thank you, John. Okay, so from the beginning of that section, just before you wait. Okay, right. 
Um, I said Happy Easter to all of you in uh, the ARC Sunday Club. That's Sparklers, Kingdom Kids, J-Team, Team Live, and YPF, of course. Um, and normally we'd have been singing I'm a New Creation, our theme song, and we'd all have been heading out to our different groups and the church would have been empty at that point. Um, though of course, by the time we came back, um, our seats would have been taken by other people. Um, but it would have been a wonderful, joyous occasion and I look forward to the time when we can meet again. Uh, in the meantime, there are some activity sheets and you need to go to the newsletter page on the church website and then you can download that where there's a picture about the resurrection to colour and a puzzle and a, a word puzzle because I know um, from the very youngest all the way up through um, even the adults how much you enjoy the word puzzles. So uh, happy Easter to you and I'm sorry I haven't got any Easter eggs for you this year so see you soon. Thank you Carol, happy Easter. I think that says something, this all says something about just how, how difficult some of these things can be in interesting times. Um, takes a lot of people to put on a service here on a Sunday morning and we miss all of you very, very deeply. Uh, so even something maybe as simple as plugging my phone into Facebook it is prone to the odd little glitch. Uh, but this song should get us back in the spirit, get us back into worshipping uh, with its wonderful acclamation chorus, Christ is risen indeed. A song that sings of all the things we're so excited about at the Easter time. Please do march round your flats, your houses, wherever you are, two metres away from each other, singing, my heart will sing the gospel, Christ is risen, Alleluia. Christ is 
which I stand each your Savior on the resurrection day. Here is work the love and go a peace that never goes away. And go out into a waiting world and go and I may say, the Lord is written Christ is Hallelujah. Christ is risen, Hallelujah. silent for a few minutes before we move to Holy Communion. I want to say a huge thank you to Richard for the use of his form uh, for recording the, all of these services. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love you made us for yourself. When we turned away you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ you shared our life, that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed, at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal Son of Heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Jesus gives us the privilege of calling God our Father. So, together we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread.
I receive this bread and wine on behalf of all of us in the church family as the body of our Lord Jesus Christ which he gave for us and his blood which he shed for us. I eat and drink in remembrance that Jesus died for us. Let us all feed on him in our hearts this Easter morning by faith with thanksgiving. Pray, God of life, who for our salvation gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection delivered us from the power of the devil, grant us so to die daily to sin, that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his risen life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And together we pray. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Well, as ever, I want to thank a very small team of us who are making this possible here. Um, I hope you've been getting my emails. Uh, if you haven't, then drop me an email. And here's the laser display screen here, telling you uh, how to find our website and how to find the office email, okay? Office, it's in johnz15.co.uk. Um, if you'd like to receive my emails, I tend to send out a couple of emails a week. Uh, and one of them has a word puzzle attached. Um, do, uh, do drop me an email. Uh, we thought it couldn't get any worse, didn't we, two years ago when the church was full of scaffolding and 500 of us packed into a church which had only just been cleaned. Um, but uh, this situation does remind us that Jesus makes it possible for us to meet with him, whatever the circumstances, and thank God St. John's rises to the challenge. Hope this Easter service has been a blessing to you. Thank you for all your kind uh, comments, for all your interaction with the services. Keep the prayer requests coming, because if I see the prayer requests in the comments, I will uh, reflect them in emails and in our services. Uh, Dan's got some things going on at Three Mills uh, this afternoon. Um, he's not got a meeting on Monday night. Uh, he's only got Thursday prayer this week on the St John's Facebook page, but there will be the Zoom discussion on Thursday night at Christchurch Three Mills. Uh, I'm getting a few days off uh, this week, so um, you, you, you'll probably get an email from me from somewhere, but you can get me on the vicarage number, okay, so uh, you're very welcome to afford me on the vicarage number. I will be checking emails uh, from time to time as well. Um, next Sunday, we're back with uh, Holy Communion again at, uh, at 12 noon next Sunday. Do join us um, the following Sunday, uh, we hope that we'll be celebrating the Sunday Club birthday um, remotely, uh, but uh, we, we're going to mark the fact that it's Sunday Club's 30th birthday on the 26th of April. So do join us, please. And uh, do please keep on praying for all these prayer requests. We've got some birthdays, haven't we? Yes. Some birthdays. Got a birthday card for Imani Ikenga. Who is 11 this week? Imani, this is going to go to, to Grandma, okay? And let's pick up your birthday card from Grandma. Uh, and we've also got a birthday card for Ethan Businge, uh, who is 6 this week. And Ethan, that will go in the post to you after the service today. Uh, we've also got a few more birthdays, we've got quite a lot more birthdays. Joshua Yekum's birthday is on Monday. Belinda Bully's birthday is on Thursday. Uduak in Kotaria's birthday Wednesday. Happy birthday, Uduak. Kola Mapunda's birthday is on Thursday, Farida. Make sure that you give him a, a, a good birthday. 
It's Anita Hawcup's birthday on Wednesday. Now, I know Anita's watching. Um, Anita, I hope that all your many grandchildren, great-grandchildren, all 96 of them, are able to phone you and wish you a happy birthday, okay? Um, it's Alex over Pius's birthday on Friday. Happy birthday, Alex. You must be very, very frustrated not being able to uh, go out and do drumming at this time. And it's Daniel O'Bonda's birthday on Tuesday. Happy birthday, Daniel. If we've missed any birthdays, then uh, happy birthday to you and anyone else for the birthday this week. I want to say a special thank you to Anita for enabling Jean to hear the live stream service. Jean doesn't have internet access, but Anita puts the phone next to her tablet and Jean gets to listen in. So, uh, Jean, if you're listening, I uh, hope you're enjoying the service. Well done, Anita, and thank you so much. Uh, it, it's good to see everyone being as clever as possible at this time. I think that's it in the notices. Uh, Richard said it's a longer service than normal today. Hope your lunch isn't burnt. Um, someone emailed me to tell me they'd burnt their lunch on Friday because they got so involved in the service. The quiche stayed in the oven a bit too long. Uh, we're going to end with our final hymn now, which is Shine, Jesus, shine. Lord, the light of your love is shining.
So may God's blessing, God's peace, God's love, the reality of the resurrection power of Jesus, rest upon us all and remain with us. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, be with us, be with those we love, now and this Easter and always. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen, he is risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia.